The next speaker we've got lined up is Molly de Dios Fisher from United Voices of the World, UVW Union, who are doing great work uh, highlighting and tackling the precarious employment practices that have been so exposed by this crisis. For those of you that don't know, we had a dispute at St Mary's that was very quick to get off the ground last year. And it was a similar story to a lot of hospitals in the UK where outsourced facility staff were on minimum wages and minimum terms and conditions uh, doing frontline work. And we had great on the, line, on the ground organisers who managed to unionise 200 workers in the space of around six months and we were out on strike. They began unionising in around June and we were out on strike by October. And after nine days of strike action, we managed to get the trust to negotiate uh, with us. And by the 31st of January, they confirmed that they would be bringing a thousand uh, outsourced facility staff in-house across Imperial Healthcare Trust. So that's across five hospitals. Um, that's proven more important than ever now, and is not only going to save workers' lives, but save patients' lives. Um, in the process of these negotiations, we produced a report in outsourcing hospitals, and studies show how where workers are outsourced, there's less staff, less cleaners per hospital bed. There's a higher spread of infection rates, such as of MRSA. Um, the patient's perception of cleanliness is lower and the uh, stories that you get from workers about the conditions of cleaning equipment, the lack of training they receive um, and the general uh, cleanliness of the hospital is incredibly concerning. And this is really coming up during this crisis. So uh, the private contractor in St Mary's um, across Imperial Healthcare Trust is currently Sodexo and they're going out the door at the end of March and those employees are going to become NHS employees on 1st of April, which is great news. But at the moment, it is incredibly concerning because they uh, obviously some people aren't receiving occupational sick pay. Numerous are going off being told to self-isolating with coronavirus. They've reported kind of uh, not receiving appropriate training, not receiving the um, appropriate protective uh, equipment. Things are slowly getting better in some cases, but it's completely inadequate. Uh, and as ever, the outsourced facilities staff get far fewer provisions um, than in-house staff. Um, just in terms of other workplaces, we also have an ongoing dispute at St George's where uh, security are outsourced and we're also campaigning for in-house. And they um, only receive statutory sick pay, don't receive occupational sick pay. Now, during the course of coronavirus, they've received no training, no masks, even upon request, no gloves, no screens to protect themselves. They've been told that they're key workers and have had a lot of pressure applied in them to stay and work. The union has been looking into the law and the protections and under Section 44 and Section 100 of the Employment Rights Act 1996, we believe that workers do have the right to refuse to work in a lot of these instances where they believe they are in serious and imminent danger as is the case in St George's. So a number of workers have taken the incredibly brave step to um, send that letter into the employee and walk off the job. It's an incredibly terrifying step because even though they're protected from the law against dismissal you never know what these contractors are going to do and also there's the issue of pay. That's kind of what's happening with some of our disputes with numerous workplaces. Uh, our um, members are still being asked to go to work even though they're not essential jobs or uh, key workers and the risk assessments and the PPE has clearly been inadequate and we're doing what we can to respond as a union. We've had 220 new members just in the last two weeks and what we're trying to do is respond to that and try and protect workers against dismissal, protect their wages and protect their health how we can.